Nick Robinson here for Polygon, and today I went hands-on with probably like a total of three to four hours of Watch Dogs 2, which is the upcoming open world hacking game from Ubisoft, and obviously the sequel to Watch Dogs. Now, I played and reviewed Watch Dogs a few years back, and I'm gonna be 100% honest here, I didn't love it, I didn't hate it. Uh, that was a game where, while well, the hacking mechanics were really cool and hopping from camera to camera, hacking into things, it was a really cool idea. Uh, the, everything surrounding it maybe wasn't where it needed to be. And I think in Watch Dogs 2, as far as I can tell, every single component that you would want to be better is better. I'd probably go as far as to say that in the oh, playing this game for just a few hours over the past couple days, I have had more fun than the entirety of the first Watch Dogs game. Um, the hacking stuff has been kind of completely revamped in a really cool way. Um, there are now these sort of quick actions that basically by holding L1, you have a wheel that appears. So we're playing on PS4 today. You can hit triangle, circle, X or square to do one of four hacking actions on just about anything. So if you walk up to an NPC, a civilian, you can make their phone buzz by hitting triangle, or you can hit X to uh, hack into their bank account, take some of their money. Vehicles, this is one of my favorite ones. Uh, any vehicle in the game, if you hold L1, uh, you can actually take control of a vehicle remotely. Uh, so what that means is, let's say you see a car parked on the street, you could hit triangle to make it start driving forward, then hit square to make it swerve to the left. Uh, and the quick actions allow you to sort of do those things on the fly. So maybe while you're driving a car, you don't have the time to open the full hacking menu and pop off an action. By tapping L1, for example, if you're pointed at a car, it'll make that car swerve to the right off the road to get out of your way. Another example of those quick actions is, for example, if you throw out an explosive of some kind, you can quickly tap L1 to turn it into a proximity weapon. The whole game feels like this kind of sandbox of finding fun, interesting, weird ways to combine these things at your disposal. Uh, I did a, a sort of miniature mission um, where there was a gate and I took a large truck, drove it into the front of the gate, hacked into the gate to open it, turned this truck into a ramp, uh, hacked into a vehicle in the street, uh, swerved it into the alley that I was sitting in, attached an explosive to it, set that explosive to proximity, and then had the vehicle drive itself up the ramp uh, over the fence, or like through the fence, I guess, uh, and then land on some enemies and blow up and kill them. And I did that without exposing Marcus, the main character of the game. Let's talk about the drones for a second. So that's one of the big new features in Watch Dogs 2, and there are kind of two main drones. They're assigned to the left and right on the D-pad. One is the RC, which is a sort of two-wheeled remote control car, and then the other is a quadcopter, which is just a full-on, what you think of when you think of a drone, basically a flying vehicle. And the way that these two are balanced, I think, is really interesting. The quadcopter can kind of allow you to fly over an area, tag all the enemies in it, survey it. It's really good for kind of overseeing the whole area. While the quadcopter can sort of remotely hack things the way Marcus can, it can't physically interact with the world. And the RC car, on the other hand, can. So for example, if you need to hack into an electrical box to open a locked door, the RC is capable of doing that. One of the things that I was really struck by while playing Watch Dogs 2 is this sense of balance. So not only are the RC car and quadcopter balanced in a way that kind of complement each other and have two very different use cases, uh, the game is balanced in such a way that Marcus, as a character feels like the odds are in his favor without the game feeling too easy. Obviously, Marcus has the ability to hack any car, hack any camera, hack virtually any door if you can get it open. In order for that to work and for the game to not feel like a cakewalk, I feel like the character has to have some huge downside. And the way that that works in Watch Dogs 2 is you can't take a lot of bullets. Uh, Marcus, if he gets spotted, uh, it's, he's only a few shots away from dying, and I think that's great. I like this sense of making a game where you are not forced to hack all the time, but it's it's really, really uh, emphasized. They, there's a good sense of, you have these tools at your disposal, you can use them any way you want, but you'd better use them because in a shootout, Marcus is not necessarily equipped to just mow everybody down. And I like that a lot. I like that emphasis on, on stealth and on hacking. I think something else that's really worth focusing on is the new setting and new protagonist in Watch Dogs 2. Watch Dogs 1 uh, starred a guy named Aiden Pierce who was a trench coat wearing kind of blank slate. I don't feel like he necessarily had super distinctive personality traits or any clear motive or any character to the character. And, and Marcus does not have that problem at all. He's a, a funny, like sort of jovial, super smart, opinionated guy uh, who is not some gritty, revenge-focused video game protagonist in the traditional sense. And the world he inhabits, San Francisco, is uh, very interesting to me, uh, primarily as a resident of San Francisco. Uh, seeing the city that I live in represented is obviously cool in one way, but seeing the way that they're choosing to depict 
elements of the city that are popular and unpopular is, is kind of fascinating. Walking around the city, you see people talking about using Uber or Lyft equivalents, right? There's obviously a huge stand-in for Google and Facebook in the game. You'll see like Google buses driving down Market Street, which all adds up. There's also a lot of landmarks from the city that are in there. Uh, I had one really interesting moment in the game where uh, I was walking through the Castro district and uh, Marcus and this NPC had like a 45 second conversation about gentrification in the Castro and how people are moving in with their kids and these kids don't like seeing dildos in the shop windows and it's like if you don't like that maybe you shouldn't have moved to the Castro and I just that stuff feels very authentic as someone who's been living in the city for a while I I think I came into this game with a sense of trepidation just because I was cautious about like whether they would represent the city in a way that felt contemporary and relevant to 2016 and accurate and I think they have I think they managed to satirize San Francisco in a way that feels accurate and doesn't feel corny I think the open world games that I have the most affection for are these super robust, systemic, uh, sort of reactive ones. And this feels like it was built around those ideas. One of my favorite examples of this sort of systemic reactive open world is uh, there are these coffee shops and restaurants all around the game. I think they're served sometimes as meeting points in missions, but they're not, there's nothing to do in them except for be in them. I have one example where I, I walked into a coffee shop, the NPC was uh, having kind of an irritating conversation, so I used uh, Marcus's hacking ability to call in a gang strike on him. Essentially, uh, it sent like a fake text to some gang leaders saying that this dude had ratted them out or was somehow needed to be got. So uh, the gang showed up to the coffee shop with machine guns, swarmed it, uh, were kind of like taking cover against the wall. A police car saw that. Um, police started swarming the coffee shop. I went out the back door of the coffee shop and walked back around the front and what I saw was one of the gang leaders I had called in being escorted into a police car and arrested by the police. And like, that's the stuff that excites me about open world games is these weird, unpredictable, uh, probably unrepeatable things that just happen to happen while you're playing. It makes the world feel a lot more alive than, than Watch Dogs 1 and frankly, a lot of open world games and that stuff excites me a lot. There are a lot of differences, obviously, between Watch Dogs 2 and Watch Dogs 1, but one of the ones that makes me the happiest is this sense that the game is willing to have fun with itself. That's a major change, and that's something that I think was a, a really smart decision for a franchise that kind of needed an injection of jokiness and, and fun. You in this game can, for example, hop on top of a sports car, uh, hack into it, force it to drive full speed, pedal to the metal down the street, and then do an emo where Marcus starts dancing or flipping off all the bystanders. Um, that silliness is like, feels like fundamentally part of the game. Even in the cutscenes I saw, like, even if they're, they're doing something relatively serious, it's, there are jokes there, the characters talk in ways that make them feel like real characters. Like I heard a lot of dialogue over the course of my four hours with the game, both from the main characters and from NPCs, and I can't really think of any times where it made me cringe. And that is really, really high praise, I think, for a AAA video game. So yeah, that's my early impression on Watch Dogs 2 based on the time I played with it. Uh, I'll admit I came into this a skeptic as someone who I think is pretty well documented as having not loved the first game. Um, and against all odds, this game has won me over or at least made me someone who's tentatively excited to sink a lot more time into it when it comes out on November 15th for Xbox One, PS4, and PC. Uh, if you want to see more from Watch Dogs 2, we've got tons of coverage for it all over our YouTube channel, including uh, well over an hour of just raw gameplay from my time with the game. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much for watching. I've been Nick Robinson, this is Polygon, and if you want to see more, feel free to subscribe to us right here on YouTube. Thanks! And I have two last examples of cool little hacking moments I had in the game. One, uh, and this is a pretty simple one, was hacking into a full like 30 foot crane, uh, then pressing triangle and X to like move the box hanging from the crane, which had like full physics, like a rope and everything, uh, distracting a guard with that, waiting for him to walk under it, and then just crushing him with it. 